Hey, welcome. I am Machik Zaremba with Fathom Realty, and I'm joined with Chris Cavazos with Your Home Lender. Chris, welcome. Thank you, man. I'm a pleasure to be here. I always love coming on the show with you and talking with you. It's just a great experience every time. Well, you know, today is a day where we're going to recap a little bit about what has happened in the last year. And I do put out a lot of market updates. If you're interested in what's happening, go check out the channel and old, uh, old videos and so on. But right now, we're going to really discuss one year ago today, what did the market look like and what does it look like? So, Chris, tell me, what's really going on in your industry? <laughs> Machek, so much has gone on in the mortgage industry in the past year like I can't even wait to tell you about it but I think that we should start with you first what's going on on the real estate side what's going on with houses why okay. don't we start there and we'll we'll uh, head over to my side all right so you know what I've seen is this uh, running a small team you know we've done quite a few transactions throughout the last few years it's been pretty busy now what we had before was a very low inventory market yep. we had tons of competition we had multiple offers I mean, pretty much everything. We had even some people waiving appraisals, waiving inspections. Crazy. Coming in cash when they're not even a cash buyer. I did some of those. So there was a lot of situations. Yeah. Um, it's no longer like this. Right now, uh, we're actually entering a really balanced market. Um, you know, for the state of Florida, it's at five-month inventory. Wow. Sarasota County is a three-month inventory. Better so our local, local market is still a little bit leaning on the seller side. But the, the state level is definitely starting to lean, go, going more towards uh, a balanced market. And I think it's just that a lot of people are moving to our area because we're a, you know, a tourist place, a lot of second home purchases and so on. Uh, so, uh, so it's becoming more fair. I'll say that. That's where it is. It's not the sellers beating up the buyers anymore. It's more of a of a equal jab, if you could say that. Okay. Uh, how about you? What's what are you seeing in the lending industry? What's changed? Yeah. So just to recap a little bit, what you're saying. I mean, we we worked in some deals last year, and and all those things happened with over over asking price, and you know some deals where we came slid in cash just to try to get the offer uh, one, and yep. we come in with financing and. And you know, it was really crazy. It was really easy to be a loan officer a year ago, right? It was with interest rates being, you know, super low. And today, I mean, you know, we're seven plus percent, right? So um, we've had a lot of changes over the past year in the sense of inflation happening and, and things along those lines. So, you know, when, I'm, when we talk about the mortgage industry, it's just been really, really crazy. You know, it's been really crazy. So I think we should get into, you know, uh, what the interest rates look like and talk a little bit about that. Right? That's, that's the number one thing people want yeah, to know. My yeah. clients are asking, what's my interest rate going to be? And, you know, I always refer them out to you and say like, hey, look, Chris is the one that's going to go and check because it's based on a lot of things. You know, what kind of loan program? What's your down payment? First home, second home, sure. investment loan, all that stuff. So, so what was it a year ago? What were interest rates like in, in what, March 2022? Gosh, I mean, you were looking at rates probably in, in the 3 or 4% range around then, right? So, I mean, and, and now, and, and that's kind of when they started to go up a little bit too. You know, that's when they got a little bit more volatile. You know, before that it was like, I mean, my personal interest rate is 2.25. Yeah. Right, so you look at how low it was today and, you know, I priced that alone yesterday and it was over 7%. So that's a huge disparity. Yeah, yeah. And, so, yeah. So these clients... Now that they have the buyers, let's just say, yeah. now that they have a little bit of opportunity for some houses that they actually like because yep. the inventory is up and they can beat up the price a little bit, not have to offer over asking and competing with 15 other people. Sure. Um, they're coming in and they're being shocked with a sticker price. Payment shock. Payment shock. Payment shock is a yeah. thing. I mean, how do you how do you consciously go from 2.75 or 3% to seven percent that's very that's a hard number to yeah. stomach and and something's to be said about that much like i think you know through the covid through the pandemic through what we happened we saw uh, values of property in the tampa area raised like 33 percent. i think was the number yeah. i read and that was like the highest in the nation mm -hmm. so now you have all these higher valued homes coupled with high interest rates right double um, whammy it's a double whammy you know yeah. and when people have these low rates you were still getting into um you know some houses we'll call it at a fair market value then, right? Because um, there's just been a lot of equity that's happened over the last year too. Yeah. So it's a double-edged sword. We've got, we've got the high uh, payment, we've got um, the higher interest rates, and we have, you know, high-priced homes. So it's, t it's tough out there. It is tough out there, you know. But what's really you know, kind of interesting is, is even though we have, you know, these high rates, 
uh, to what you said, Machek, you know, we're not getting these over asking price offers. We're not getting, um, you know, uh, appraisal contingency waivers. We're not doing those things because there's just there's just not a frenzy to buy houses. So now's a really great opportunity maybe to purchase a home. What do you think about that? So I recently did a video on the nine regrets. You know, Hippo, which is an insurance uh, related company, yep. did a survey of all the pandemic buyers and there was nine regrets. And as I went through this in this video, all these nine regrets, there were some things that were crazy, but one that wasn't crazy, that was legit a real concern was that people regretted their home because it wasn't the home they wanted you know mm. they were in this position where they had to move relocation whatever it was they sold their old house they need yeah. to find a new one before prices kept going up and now they regretted it because they weren't liking what they bought well that's not pretty much not the case right now. Sure. There, the inventory has increased to such a level that it's a very healthy level yeah. and our local market a little less so than the in general state of Florida but also Florida is a little bit behind the rest of the USA. So because we have so many people moving here. So our inventory is looking really nice. So if you are a buyer, you even though you may get that sticker shock, which is temporary, we'll get into that in a second. Sure. Um, you, you're going to have some options. And you know, one of the options is getting a lot of your closing costs paid for out of which could buy down the interest rate. So you're here in 7%, 7%, whoa, maybe it's not the right time to buy. However, the reality is that with, with an agent like me and a lender like Chris, you have opportunities that you may not know about. One of which is a 2-1 buy down or maybe just paying points and buying down that interest rate, half a percentage point, one percentage point. You know, it all depends on your situation, really. Sorry. That's why you need to, to talk to Chris. Every situation is different specifically, too. And I'm glad that we got to this point right now because, you know, over the past year, there's been some changes on the backside of the mortgage industry with Fannie and Freddie. Um, they released something called LLPAs. Okay, what's that? I mean, I, I think I've heard of this, but it's not really talked about. So sure. Yes. Yeah. So I don't that. want to say they released it. They've always had these LLPAs. And what an LLPA is, a loan level pricing adjustment. Okay. Okay. And it's basically the way to explain this is it's risk based adjustments to, to uh, interest rates for certain criteria. Okay. So, I mean, it sounds like, you know, you have a higher credit score, you're a lower risk. So you get a slightly lower discount. You don't get a up price adjustment. You get a lower price adjustment. You're at 550. Well, they're going to jack you up. Is that kind of what it's about? It, you know, historically, yes. Um, historically, it was if you had, you know, perfect credit, all the money, the 20% down, all those things, you know, mm -hmm. your risk, obviously, tolerance was less, right? Because you, your, you know, your numerical credit score shows that you have, um, you know, good history of payments, on-time payments, all those things. But, you know, we're in a time right now with a limited inventory nationally. We have such, you know, low supply of homes available, right? So. And, and Fannie and Freddie looked at this and they said, all right, well, we want to be able to stimulate the primary home buyer, you know, the person that's going to buy a house and live in it, whether that's a first time home buyer or, you know, you sell your house and you're buying your next primary residence. Fannie was like, all right, we've got to do something here because with limited inventory, you know, there's no housing. What do we do? So they're changing their LLPAs or loan level pricing adjustments. And, you know, I, I kind of just want to give you an example of what an LLPA is. Okay. Really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, if you're going to go buy a house, um, a house or a condo, that this is the example we're buying same purchase price. Doesn't matter about okay. that. Same down payment. We'll do 20% down same to house versus a condo. Okay. Your interest rate for the condominium is going to be slightly higher than than the interest rate for the single family home. Why is that? Great question, right? <laughs> Why is that? Because if your neighbor burns down their condo, your condo is going to burn down too. Okay, so right? you're a higher risk it's because a higher it's risk. a closer proximity to other problems that are unrelated to your, you and your loan. But at the end of the day, so Fannie and Freddie want to protect their assets and they want to protect their loans and they want to make sure they get money. So they're going to charge a little bit more for that. And there are some other LLPAs. I gave you some examples. Credit score gives you a different LLPA. The amount of down payment that you put okay, down yeah. loan to value is another LLPA. Those are just some examples of what it is. So what Fannie, Fannie and Freddie are doing now is they're saying, okay, well, we want to help the, the the lesser guy, the lower guy. So in the example you gave earlier, maybe not a 550 credit score, but you know, a person with a six a 660 credit score putting yep. five percent down may pay less in points than the person that has a 780 credit score putting 20% down. So wait, they're punishing the people with a better down payment and a better credit score? 
this has been a controversy that's been going on for the past few months in our industry. Okay. Right? Because it's almost that's like odd. it's almost like a Robin Hood effect, right? Like r- taken from the rich to give to the poor. Um, you know, penalizing the person putting twenty percent down with a seven eighty credit score. Um, so yeah, in essence, they're they're trying to do that because they got to make it up somewhere. You know what I mean? What's the point? of not rewarding the person, you know, that has a little more down payment. What, why, what's the reasoning behind this? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Um, basically, like I said, they, they need to stimulate first time home buyers. They need to, the point of it is, is they need to help them somehow. And the only way that they can help them, aside from down payment assistance programs and things like that, is make the ability to get a loan more affordable. And unfortunately, if you've got a 780 credit score and 20% down, chances are you're doing well in life. Mm-hmm. So let's face it, yeah. chances are you're doing well in life. If you've got a 660 credit score and you've got just enough for the down payment, you know that that person needs help. And unfortunately, you know you're going to see that in in pricing. Now, the now I'm not saying you're going to go from six to seven percent. Mm-hmm. Okay. And when I talk about LLPAs, it's on the backside. It's marginal things that. If I never said this stuff, you may never have felt it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's going to be something that we're going to see as we move forward. And it may be a better option for you to put less money down in these times. Yeah, so that's interesting because, you know, you as a buyer, right, you may be thinking to yourself, but why would I lock myself up for 30 years on a lower down payment? Sure, I, my credit, uh, my interest rate might be just a little bit higher, but why would I lock myself in? And, you know, we, we haven't touched on this, but this is just something that, that we've talked about many times is, well, how long are interest rates going to stay at this level? Are, and are you expecting within the next, let's just say, five years for them to come back down? Personally, my answer is absolutely yes. What do you think? Do you think they'll come down a little bit in the next five years? That's a yes, I do think. I, I think probably less and, than that. And what do you do in that time? You do exactly what I did Very on a couple of my investment refinance. properties. Yeah. I refinanced, refinance. and I had, you know, I only had a 4% on one of mine. I went uh, 4% and I refinanced to 3.25. And that was, even though I had a few thousand dollars of expenses, sure. that was such a good move. My, my payment went down and that's less important. My principal pay down went up yeah. that was more important yeah. more cash flow into the business of that property so whether it's an investment property I you know I'm talking about my experience which was investment sure. but my primary also got refinanced right and I went from four to three point two five on my primary right. so you know it was uh, I only did a few of them uh, in terms of refinances but the payment went down because I bought them at a higher interest rate and if we just backtrack to what the time right before I got licensed I got licensed sure. in 2004 and I made a home purchase in 2003 and it was a primary occupancy it was my uh, it was a second property I owned and I paid seven point two five percent now I had you know maybe I was just young and ignorant and I didn't know as much as I know now but I was just fine with that interest rate because I was looking at the payment and then guess what happened interest rates went up they went down they went up they went down all types of things happened, and then they really dropped right and that would have been a great time to refinance and so on right so that's the strategy that you should be looking at if you need to move then make the move don't worry about the interest rate this is something that you can always change in the future when time is right. And then Chris, if you if you did your loan with Chris, he's going to reach out to you. Say, "Hey, have you considered refinancing? I remember we did a loan at, you know, 6.875 and now they're at 4.5. Here's yeah. 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 So, 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 Chris, can someone call you and just get like a free little estimate on on how much they can expect to pay with all these new, you know, L, or these adjusted uh, LLPAs? Sure. Yeah, you know, I can do rate quotes without having to fill out an application, and actually without even having to pull credit. You know, we'll have okay. a link below this video that you can uh, go on and fill out some information, and then we can make contact and we can talk about what those rates would look like for you. Okay, and if you want to know what kind of properties you can buy for, you know, the price point that you'd get approved for, then just go to the link uh, below, which is my website, just Sarasota, sarasota.com. And you can just do your searches over there. You know, it's going to make you sign up and all that. And then I'll be able to contact you if you have any questions and you can contact me. So Chris, is there anything else on your mind about what's really changed in the market from one year ago to today? Gosh. In your you know, industry. You know, we have to just have to talk about this real quick. Inflation. We got to just really talk okay. about that real quick. Okay. Um, because that's the indicator to when interest rates go down. So I want to leave you guys with this little bit here. Um, yesterday, or I'm sorry, Tuesday, Powell met with the uh, Fed again, and, and, and he doesn't think inflation has really got a handle on it yet. 
So they're thinking that they're going to have to adjust the way that they hike their interest rates, faster hikes. Mm. And it's important to know that, you know, once we follow, follow the news, once you say, once we start hearing unanimously that, you know, we've combated inflation, we're now in a recession and it's been announced, that's really when you're going to see rates start to come back down. But what, you know, to your point a little bit earlier, what you said is, you know, rates, I bought my house at 7.125, whatever you said, rates go up. Well, rates continue to go up now, right? So you can, they could go up to the rest of the year. You know, I've been reading a, a lot of different things with mortgage-backed securities, things like that, and they're trying to say that, you know, towards the end of this year, beginning of next year, we should see a reprieve in interest rates. But that doesn't mean you should wait, because as soon as the rates go down, we're going to have a feeding frenzy for housing again. That's right. We're going to have a feeding frenzy, right? So you're going yeah. to have home values and multiple offer situations and all these things happening because there's so many people right now, like you said, that don't like the home. They regret it. Mm -hmm. and they, they just can't stomach the rate, but they will when it gets closer to the one that they have now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, I'll fin uh, what I'll leave you with is don't wait for the feeding frenzy. Don't be the little fish that gets devoured by the sharks, okay? All you have to do is make a decision, and if the payment is right today, it will only get better in the future after you refinance. So, and usually we make more money as the years go on, we get promotions, we start making more money, usually, right? Yeah. So definitely make a move if you have to, and if you don't have to, if it's just an investment, then lead by the numbers, lead by the return on your investment. If you wanna talk about that, give me a call because I love talking about that. I've been an investor for over 20 years. You know so, stuff, yeah. so Chris, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate all this information. And if anyone wants to reach out to you, what's your phone number? 941-806-7625. Or you can visit my website, yourhomelender.com. -E and uh, you can check out everything you need to see there. Excellent. And my name is Machik Zaremba with Fathom Realty, 941-888-SOLD. That's my phone number. Give me a call. We'll chat soon. Thanks. Thanks.